we had already booked online tickets from the ASI website and entered the premises of the Man Mandir. We have destroyed the habitat of the birds and animals and this palace was made and nobody stays over here now. Now these birds are staying. Folklore suggests that Raja Surat Singh, who suffered from leprosy, was healed by the sage Gwalipa. Out of gratitude, he decided to guard the hilltop to protect the sage from the wild animals and named the place Gwalior after the sage Gwalipa. had once defeated the Gwalior king Jayajira of Sindhya and occupied the Gwalior fort temporarily. The fort is a witness to the fierce battle of 1858 fought between the British and the Jhansi ki Rani Lakshmi Bai. inside the Gwalior fort. It is believed the walls of his room were adorned with beautiful gems and precious stones which were later looted by the Mughals. passages which connected the nearby kingdoms of Jhansi and Ocha to this Gwalior fort. Many people in search of hidden treasures went inside these passages and went missing and that is why the government has blocked these doors and has cemented the hidden passages. Right now we are in the underground chamber of Raja Man Singh's palace which was later used by the Mughals as prisons. Plenty of dilapidated palaces and structures are there inside the fort. To visit those, we collected separate tickets and went to the Karan Mahal at first. Mahal is attributed to the second king of the Toma dynasty, Kirti Singh, whose other name was Karan and hence the name Karan Mahal. Kirti Singh is the same person under whose patronage the rock-cut Jain sculptures were carved 
in the Urvai Valley which we saw while entering the Gwalior Fort. We see the Vikram Mahal. Vikramaditya was the son of Raja Man Singh. Baba has written that Vikram Mahal was interconnected with Man Mandir through an underground passage. Vikramaditya was a devotee of Lord Shiva and he had built a Shiv temple in this campus. Next on the line, we came across the Johar Kund, the water of which once supplied the different palaces of the fort campus. The neglected water tank reminded us of the horror of mass immolation of Rajput women to protect their dignity from the forces of Iltutmish. To distract ourselves from the disturbing thoughts of Johar, we left the place in haste and arrived at the Jahangir Mahal. This building was constructed by Sher Shah. Later on, Jahangir came here and did some restoration work and renamed the building as Jahangir Mahal. for his beloved wife Mriga Nayani who is Gujari by caste. Hence the name Gujari Mahal. It has a huge courtyard in the middle and it houses two underground apartments. Right now the Gujari Mahal is used as a museum which displays numerous regional artifacts. Passing by the bright shades of hued tiles, we started descending only to get stunned by some more treasures of a rich cultural heritage. Small 
we came across some more rock cut sculptures and finally the Chaturbhuj temple where one of the first written symbols of zero has been discovered. old script and the intricate finesse on a small and simple temple made it extraordinarily beautiful. The massive area of the Gwalior fort made us tired under the hot sun. It never failed to disappoint us with surprises in its every nook and corner. stones throw distance from the Gwalior fort lies the tombs of the famed tutor and pupil duo of Muhammad Ghaz and Tan Sen. Revered by Mughal emperors Babar, Humayun and Akbar, Muhammad Ghaz acquired a considerable influential position during the Mughal rule in Gwalior. He had the knack in cultivating art and one such student was the great Tan Sen who by his own talent became one of the Navratnas in Akbar Badshah's court. The perforated stone designs in the Makbara reminds us of the Jali designs of the Sidi Syed Mosque of Ahmedabad. Prominent influences from Gujarat mixed with Mughal imprints makes it a unique Indo-Islamic architecture. Starting with the Jain sculptures followed by Sasbahu temple, a functional Gurudwara and concluding with a Makbara, Gwalior represents a perfect picture of India's unity in diversity. A lot was explored in a day and a lot left behind to only promise myself to visit the powerhouse of ancient India once again.